Hey everyone, in this Spring Boot interview question series, I am covering tricky, challenging and real questions. So let's get started. How to tell an auto configuration to back away when a bean exists? In Spring Boot, to make an auto configuration step back when a bean already exists, we use a conditional on missing bean annotation. This tells Spring Boot to only create a bean if it doesn't already exist in the context. For example, if we are auto configuring a data source but want to back off when a data source bean is manually defined, we annotate the auto configuration method with conditional on missing bean where passing data source class. This ensures our custom configuration takes precedence and Spring Boot's auto configuration will not interfere if the bean is already defined. Now let's move to the different question. How to deploy Spring Boot web application as a jar and war files? To deploy Spring Boot web applications, we can package them as either jar or war files. For a jar file, we use Spring Boot's embedded server like Tomcat by running the command mvn package and then java jar command. If we need a war file for deployment on an external service, we change the packaging in the POM XML to this way, ensure the application extends Spring Boot servlet initializer and then builds with Maven package. The war file can then be deployed to any Java servlet container like Tomcat or Jetty. Now let's move to the different question. What does it mean that Spring Boot supports relaxed binding? Spring Boot relaxed binding means it's flexible in how properties are defined in configuration files. The flexibility allows us to use various formats for property names. For example, if we have a property named server.port, we can write it in different ways like server.port, server-port or server underscore port. Spring Boot understands these as the same property. This feature is especially helpful because it lets us adapt to different environments or personal preferences without changing the way we access these properties in my code. It makes Spring Boot configuration more tolerant to variations, making it easier for us to manage and use properties in our applications. Now let's move to the different question. Discuss the integration of Spring Boot applications with CI-CID pipelines. Integration in Spring Boot apps with CI-CID pipelines means making the process of building, testing and deploying automated. When we make changes to our code and push them, the pipeline automatically builds the app, run tests and if everything looks good, deploys it. This uses tools like Jenkins or GitHub Actions to automate tasks such as compiling the code and checking for errors. If all tests pass, the app can be automatically sent to a test environment or directly to users. These setups help us quickly find and fix errors, improve the quality of our app and make update faster without manual steps. Now let's move to the different question. Can we override or replace the embedded Tomcat server in Spring Boot? Yes, we can override or replace the embedded Tomcat server in Spring Boot. If we prefer using a different server like Jetty or Undertow, we simply need to exclude Tomcat as a dependency and include the one we want to use in our POM or Gradle file. Spring Boot automatically configure the new server as the embedded server for our application. This flexibility allows us to choose the server that best fits our needs without significant changes to our application, making Spring Boot adaptable to various deployment environments and requirements. Now let's move to the different question. How to resolve white label error page in the Spring Boot application? To fix the white label error page in a Spring Boot application, we need to check if our URLs are correctly mapped in the controllers. If a URL doesn't match any controller, Spring Boot shows this error page. We should add or update our mappings to cover the URLs we are using. Also, we can create custom error pages or use controller advice annotation to handle errors globally. This way, instead of the default error page, visitors can see a more helpful or custom message when something goes wrong. Moving to the next question, how can you implement pagination in a Spring Boot application? To implement pagination in a Spring Boot application, I use Spring Data JPS pageable interface. In the repository layer, I modify my query methods to accept a pageable object as a parameter. When calling these methods from my service layer, I create an instance of page request specifying the page number and page size I want. This page request is then passed to the repository method. Spring Data JPA handles the pagination login automatically returning a page object that contains the requested page of data along with useful information like total pages and total elements. This approach allows me to efficiently manage large data sets by retrieving only a subset of data at a time. Moving to the next question, how to handle a 404 error in Spring Boot? To handle a 404 error in Spring Boot, we make a custom error controller. We implement the error controller interface and mark it with controller annotation. Then we create a method that returns our error page. 
or message for 404 errors and we map this method to the error url using request mapping annotation in this method we can check the error type and customize what users see when they hit a page that doesn't exist this way we can make the error message or page nicer and more helpful. Moving to the different question. How can Spring Boot be used to implement event-driven architecture? Spring Boot lets us build event-driven architectures by allowing parts of our application to communicate through events. We create custom events by making classes that extends application event. To send out an event, we use application event publisher. Then we set up listeners with event listener annotation to react to these events. This can be done in real time or in the background making our application more modular different parts can easily talk to each other or respond to changes without being directly connected which is great for tasks like sending notification or updating database on events helping keep our code clean and manageable moving to the next question what are the basic annotations that spring boot offers spring boot offers several basic annotations for the development spring boot Application annotation is a key annotation that combines configuration, enable auto configuration, and component scan annotation, setting up the foundation for a Spring Boot application. REST controller and request mapping annotation are essential for creating RESTful web services, allowing us to define controller classes and map URL paths to the methods. Service and repository annotation mark service and data access layer, respectively, promoting separation of concerns. Auto wired annotation enables dependency injection automatically wiring beans. These annotations are crucial in reducing boilerplate code, speeding up development and maintaining clear architecture, making a Spring Boot application easy to create and manage. Moving to the next question, discuss the integration and use of distributed tracing in a Spring Boot application for monitoring and troubleshooting. Integrating distributed tracing in a Spring Boot application like with Spring Cloud Sleuth or Zipkin helps in monitoring and troubleshooting by providing insights into the application's behavior across different services. When a request travels from microservices, these tools assign and propagate unique IDs for the request, creating detailed traces of its journey. This makes it easier to understand the flow, pinpoint delays, and identify errors in complex distributed environments. By visualizing how requests move across services, we can optimize performance and quickly resolve issues, enhancing reliability and user experience in microservice architecture. Moving to the next question, your application needs to store and retrieve files from a cloud storage service. Describe how you would integrate this functionality into a Spring Boot application. To integrate cloud storage in a Spring Boot application, I would use a cloud SDK like AWS SDK for S3 or Google Cloud Storage libraries depending on the cloud provider. First, I would add the SDK as a dependency in my POM or Gradle file. Then I would configure the necessary credentials and settings in application properties or YAML file for accessing the cloud storage. I would create a service class to encapsulate the storage operations like uploading, downloading and deleting files by auto-wiring these services where I need it. I can interact with cloud storage seamlessly leveraging Spring dependencies injection to keep my code clean and manageable. Let's move to the different question. To protect your application from abuse and ensure fair usage, you decide to implement rate limiting on your API endpoints. Describe a simple approach to achieve this in a Spring Boot. To implement rate limiting in a Spring Boot application, a simple approach is to use a library like Bucket4j or Spring Cloud Gateway with built-in rate limiting capabilities. By integrating one of these libraries, I can define policies directly on my API's endpoint to limit the number of requests a user can make in a given time frame. This involves configuring a few annotations or settings in my application properties to specify the rate limits. This setup helps prevent abuse and ensures that all the users have fair access to my application's resources, maintaining a smooth and reliable service. Moving to the next question, for audit purposes, your application requires a soft delete feature where records are marked as deleted instead of being removed from the database. How would you implement this feature in your Spring Boot application? To implement a soft delete feature in my Spring Boot application, I would add a deleted boolean column or delete timestamp data time column to my database entities instead of physically removing records from the database i would update this column to indicate a record is deleted in my repository layer i would customize queries to filter out these deleted records from all the fetch operations ensuring they are effectively invisible to the applications this approach allows me to retain the data for audit purposes while maintaining the appearance of deletion 
providing a balance between data integrity and compliance with deletion requests moving to the next question you are tasked with building a non blocking reactive rest api that can handle a high volume of concurrent requests efficiently describe how you would use spring webflux to achieve this to build a high performance non blocking rest api with spring webflux i would first add spring boot starter webflux to my project this lets me use spring's reactive features in my controller i would use rest controller annotation and return mono or flux for handling single or multiple data items asynchronously this makes my api efficient under heavy loads by using system resources better for database interactions i would use reactive repositories like reactive crud repository ensuring all parts of my application communicate non blockingly this setup helps manage lots of concurrent requests smoothly making my api faster and scalable